All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be our second video in a three-part video series on water. Now, as we know and understand, water is a critical resource that we need each and every day for drinking, for sanitation purposes, for cooking, whatever that may be. But yet, I think that sometimes we take for granted that the water's always there. Now, we've seen in recent history over the years, that may not always be the case. And also today, we're starting to see in the news and our media feeds that this year and beyond could be some of the worst drought seasons that we've seen. So what are we doing today to prepare for that by preparing ourselves with the necessary water resources? So in video one, I discussed options around water storage. In this video, we're specifically gonna show you how to build a water catchment barrel. And then in the third video, we'll get into water purification and or filtration. So let's jump in. All right, so first and foremost, as you can see here, I've got a 55 gallon blue water drum. So this is what I'm gonna use in today's example. But again, you could use a trash can, one of those uh, large Rubbermaid trash cans. There's several different options. I'm gonna show you an example of how I'm gonna build this one, again, out of this 55 gallon drum. So you'll need a couple different other items. So first you'll need a piece of PVC. This PVC that I've got here, as you can see, is a three quarter by 18 inch. I'm gonna actually end up cutting this into a couple pieces. And then next from there, you would also be able to use this ball valve. And this ball valve will actually go between your PVC and allow you to turn your water on and off at the bottom of the barrel when we get done. And that comes in pretty handy when you wanna get access to the water once you have the water barrel full. Next, we're gonna look at, of course, how are we gonna put that hole in the bottom? And one of the key pieces is this rubber seal. And this is from Uniseal. So instead of using a bulkhead like this where you'd actually have to take it apart, be able to reach down in the bottom of the barrel and screw these two pieces together, this little Uniseal device is actually pretty slick. It allows you to create a seal very quickly and easily once you put the PVC into the hole. The PVC actually pushes out the rubber and seals it around the barrel on the inside. So this is a nice, handy, quick and easy way to create a seal that allows you to build your PVC out of your barrel, creating an option for being able to use it so that you can have a water option. On the end of that PVC is gonna be this piece, which is gonna be your water spigot or your hose bit connection. Now this gives you another option which allows you to connect an actual hose to it so that you can run the water anywhere you need to based on what you wanna use the water for. Okay, another thing is of course having a magic marker. This will be used primarily just to mark around the different things that you're gonna need to cut. So like your uniseal, and then of course around the top of the barrel here where you're gonna cut out for the water to drain down in from your roof. So this is what I'm gonna use for my pre-filter. As you can see, this is a little grate. Uh, it's a speaker grate, so a Polk speaker, as you can see here. So what I'll use this particular grate for is actually going to be my pre-filter. So it's going to go on top of the barrel where I cut this hole at so that it will actually filter out kind of the larger junk that may flow down from your roof and so forth. It's going to be that pre-filter to catch it, drain out, or to hopefully capture a lot of that gunk before the leaves and things like that. So as a pre-filter prior to the, that as well. So the last of course is going to be the rubber cement and this is of course going to be used for joining our different PVC sections together. That's all part of that. Now, of course, a couple other tools you're gonna need to be able to cut the holes and things. First and foremost, I've got here basically just a Sawzall, and that's gonna be used to cut the hole around the barrel. So pretty straightforward, again, just a Sawzall. You could use a skill saw or things depending on what you have available. I'm gonna go ahead and use this to cut the different chunks out until I get the, the hole the size that I want it. The next thing, of course, is gonna be a hand drill, and I'm gonna use a drill bit with a hole saw on the end, 
and this will allow me to drill a hole where I want it at the bottom of the barrel where we're going to put our PVC connection for the water spout. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, of course, is go in. We want to use the magic marker. We're going to draw around this so that we can actually determine about how big we want the hole to be. Now, this may not be exact because I don't want it the same size, right? I'm actually going to want to cut it a little bit smaller than this pre-filter or this grate that I'm going to use. But this will at least allow me to mark it so that I have an idea of about approximately how big I want the hole to be as I start cutting pieces out and so forth. Alright, so the next part of this guys, of course, is going to be drilling our hole. And again, this is where we're going to put our out spout, right? So this is where the PVC is going to go in through our uniseal rubber connector and then come out with our hose. So let's go ahead and drill that now. All right, so the next step, of course, now that we've got the hole, is to go ahead and apply or place our uniseal into the hole itself. So this, again, is our little rubber seal that will provide the connection to our PVC. The PVC will go inside it and actually pushes it out to seal it up around the barrel. So we'll just go ahead and pop it in. I'll go ahead and try and push it in nice and straight so it seats nice and well and uh, creates a nice seal around the edges. And that's about as simple as you can get right there. Okay, so now that we've got our seal, the next thing we want to actually do is go ahead and glue our PVC pieces together. So I went ahead and cut these pieces out. Now I cut them about four inches. You can cut them however long you want, depending on how long you want your spout out of the bottom of your barrel. Now I did sand uh, around the edges to kind of chamfer them a little bit, make them a little easier to slide into each other when we start putting the pieces together as well. So I've got two pieces, approximately four inches each. And then I've got my hose bib that will provide an option again to be able to connect my hose and use that to allow the water to come out as well. Of course I've got our PVC glue so let's go ahead and jump in and let's get these put together. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got the basic pieces glued together, we can see that we've got the ball valve so that we can turn that on. This allows the water to flow out. On the back end here, we're gonna actually connect this to the bottom of the barrel so that we can have the water flow through that into the hose bib here. Now the benefit of the hose bib, of course, is now I can attach an actual hose to the end of it and I can use that water, run it to wherever I want in my yard. I can use it for gardening, I can use it for an aquaponic system, different things that this water can now be used for because I now have a way to connect it and use it um, in multiple options. And that's the key. All right, so now that we've got the uniseal set up and we've also got the pipe all glued together and ready to go, really we just wanna take these two pieces and put them together. So we'll just take the pipe, kind of push it down in against the seal. This pushes the rubber out against the barrel and actually creates that seal. So you can see how the pipe now fits right inside that barrel and just kind of check around the edges and verify everything looks clean and uh, is good as far as sealing 
and now let's go set it up and try it out. Okay guys, so as you can see here, I've got my barrel actually set up on some cinder blocks. This helps protect the bottom of the barrel and also the water so it doesn't get hot and cold as much. Then I've also got a hose running up here and we're gonna turn that on in a second to start filling it. I've got my pre-filter set up with the speaker grate that we talked about earlier. And then I've got my guttering system that I've already run for this and this will go up to my roof. As you can see here, I've got a 10 foot length on one side and if I really want, I have an option. I'm gonna add a, probably another 10 foot length on the other side at some point. But this is just how I've got it set up for now. Now let's go ahead and start to fill this up and then take a look and see how it's gonna work. Okay, so now that we've got some water in it, let's take a look and see where we're at. As we look in here, we'll see if it focuses. You'll see that the water level is just above the seal there, and that's what we want to let it see if it will actually settle. We're going to give this about 24 hours and let it settle, and then we'll come back and check it out and see if we've got any leaks. All right, guys, so here we are. It's now almost 24 hours later, so we're going to take a look inside here and see what we got. Okay, so it looks like, based on that, kind of see where the water level is, just above the seal. Let me come out, down. So it looks like I'm not seeing any water on the bricks, not seeing or feeling any water on the barrel. Let me come out, and then we can turn this on. Oh, is that way and there's your water so again you can hook up a, hook up a hose to this gives you an option to be able to again water your garden water your plants whatever you want to do with this water and then the other possibility of course is you can use this and put it through a filter and use it for drinking if that's your only option so it gives you another backup water source when needed. Okay, so about two weeks later here we have a nice rain that came down and this will show you this is one of the ones that we already had set up beforehand and as you can see here it's actually full and overflowing so we want to set something up for an overflow for that. Another option here is a trash can that we had set up at a different area. So this is another option we've talked about which is doing a Rubbermaid trash can if you don't want to buy the blue barrels. That's a possibility with the gutter system running to your roof or to a Ramada. Here's the other one we set up, of course, the original one we talked about and actually did the video on. And this is showing you just a pre-filter, opening all this stuff out. Now let's take a look on the inside and see what happens. So as the water goes in, as you'll see here, you can see that the water actually comes in kind of dirty and murky as you would expect off of the roof and things. So what we'll do is actually give this a chance to settle for about 24 to 48 hours. And then we'll come back and look at it again a little bit later after probably a week or so and let you see what it looks like just so you can kind of get an idea. Okay, so here we are 24 hours later. As you can see, it's still a little cloudy, but you can still at least see the valve. You see my finger going down towards the valve. That's what the shadow is here. And as I pull it back up, you can see the water level. So again, this was only in a matter of a couple hours actually we got a rain. Didn't take much to get us some water. Here it is again. This is actually about a week later. And again, as you can see, it's a little clearer. So there's still some things that are settling on the top. You'll see a lot of the dirt and the heavier debris settle at the bottom. As you can see, my fingers moving up and down. Kind of moving up, let's kind of feel where my marks are on the outside. And then let's take a look on the outside and see what actually happened. So our valve, if we look at where our valve starts down here, we actually start at about five gallons. But then after this, if I go up to where my fingers ended up, we ended actually ended up at about 15 gallons, and that's pretty good. So in a matter of a couple hours, basically we ended up getting close to about 10 gallons of water in just a matter of an hour to hour and a half of a good rain. All right, guys, thanks for joining us again for this video. Hopefully it's given you some ideas and options around how to build your own water catchment barrels and or systems to be able to catch some of that rainwater. Now, something to be aware of, again, is always check your local laws and requirements. Some areas may or may not allow you to catch water depending on the situation. 
and some may limit how much you can catch. But again, this is an option for us to have one of those critical resources of water stored up and for use in other options. Thanks again. Please hit that thumbs up, that like button, hit the subscribe. If you enjoyed the video and or you found it valuable, please share it with those around you as we strive to build a community of people who are preparing and or self-reliant in those scenarios and situations that we may be facing. Now the next video will actually get into how to use that water potentially through water filtration and or water purification so that we could actually use it for drinking and sanitation purposes where necessary.